Welcome to the Highlight Kid. Bubba Jenkins back here to the program. Uh, who the hell is that guy you're fighting? Yamamuchi, right? Yep, Goti go go Yamamuchi. I don't know. I mean, if it ain't an American name, it's going to be hard to say, so I can't tell you. Well, that that's a little nationalistic, I guess. <laughs> um, you're at Metroflex right now in Long Beach. Get ready to yeah. work out. What are you going to do right now? I hit a little mitts, you know, a little light jog, man. My weight's good. I'm within 10 pounds, and, you know, we still got a week left. So, you know, it's all just light work from here. Everything's been done, put in the road work. I got over 60 miles in this month. I'm just I'm just ready to go, man. I wish we were fighting tonight, but, you know, I know he needs all the time in the world to get ready for me, so we're just going to let him, you know, stick to the contract. Uh, the, the main event got pushed. They, got, they lost the main event, right? For yeah, yeah. Did you try to did you try to call him and be a replacement? Were you trying to get you know make your fight move to to tonight? Well, it was it was thirty five, so I couldn't be a replacement because I'm way bigger than those guys, and I wouldn't have made weight last night. <laughs> but no, nah, I definitely, I definitely, I'm ready to go. So I'm you know I'm basically at the point where I'm just tired of waiting. Um, you know the the rest of these days are just paperwork and and formality. So I, I mean I'm ready to fight. I wish we like I said I wish we were fighting tonight. Let's uh. Let's talk about Dada 5000 and Kimbo Slice for a minute. Right. You saw that fight, right? Absolutely. Who, who didn't see that fight with all the statistic numbers on that one? I mean, how far back did it set our sport? Um, it, it depends on the way you're looking at it. Um, if you're looking at it from, like, random people showing up to Spike TV to look at what MMA is about, then, yeah, it, it, it probably does not share a good light on – you know, especially that fight, and maybe even the uh, the finale was a little bit anticlimactic because everybody, you know, thought that was going to be a, a much better fight than it turned out to be. So if you're looking at it from a non-fighting perspective, then yeah, it probably set us back a little bit. But if you're looking at it from a newer the perspective that I'm looking at it from, from being a Bellator fighter and also seeing the fact that you don't have to do it one way like, you know, the other organizations, you can bring good names, good fights in, and you can also bring in the entertainment part of it. And you can mix the two and be what Bellator is. They're, they're capturing the regular audience that not everyone's capturing. They're capturing the big names, the the kind of like Batman versus Supermans that you want to see. Maybe Batman and Superman are past their prime, but people still want to see it as obvious as the numbers are. So sometimes they, they get the good fights, the big names, and then sometimes they get, you know, the entertainment where you can mix it. So I like it. I, I don't mind it. Um, a lot of people were saying it was, you know, a bad look for the sport, but I think it's a new look for the sport. There, the, a lot of the new school fans don't know about Japanese MMA and its heyday, which was all of that all the time. You know, having Bob Sapp versus Nogura, you know, and, and Sapp coming out there like the truck that he is and then gassing and falling apart, Nogura getting almost beat to death. Like, literally, you're watching this fight happen. You're like, wow, this guy's going to get killed. And then he submits Bob Sapp in the second round. Like, it was crazy watching those kind of things come out of Japan. It's basically what Coker is doing. And the reason why Risen or Ryzen or whatever the hell they want to call themselves in Japan are working with Bellator. Uh, has there been any talk of you? Because, I mean, obviously, King Mo went over there, won the lightweight tournament, crushed it. Um, they're, they're talking about maybe Tito going over there to fight Fedor, you know, on that side. Is there any talk of you going over there and fighting in the future for those guys, too? Hey, man, I chase the checks. I chase the commas. Um, if, if they're going to talk about it, then they got to show me something because, you know, that's where I want to be. I want to be the Bellator 145-pound champion. And if I have to detour to go over there and whip some ass and cash some checks, then I got no problem taking that long-ass flight to, to you know, beat some people up. But, you know, if, it, if it's that or the alternative of, you know, having a title fight, I'm going to sit down and take that title fight. I don't care how long it will take me because by Christmas, by opening up my Christmas presents and giving my son and my family their Christmas presents, I want to be in a robe wearing my Bellator 145-pound belt. So that's the game plan this year, right now. Um, you know, so if 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 they have to wait because Daniel's, uh, you know, hurt and – with the hand and everything, I can understand that with white shoulder and all that. Um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm planning on focusing on Gaiote Yamayochi, running through him for three rounds of the three round shutout, knock him out in the third round, and then looking for the next biggest thing, which I believe should be the title shot. You, you don't see Gaiote as, as any kind of competition for you at all, from what, it, from what it sounds like. No, it's not that I don't see him that way. Um, 
it, it probably definitely sounded a little disrespectful in a sense, but I'm not really worried. I'm not really worried about what he brings. I'm worried about who I am becoming as a fighter. Now, if this was last year, this time, which was basically the Georgia Karakanyan fight, if I fought Gaiuti Yamayuchi like I did Georgia Karakanyan, I, I would get submitted in the first round the same way. Um, no different. But I'm a different fighter. I've grown. I, I've, I've studied the sport a little bit more than I'm getting away with my athleticism and getting away with, you know, smaller things that I used to get away with, the just simple wrestling. Now I can actually punch people. Now I can actually knock your ass out or take you down and then knock you out. So it's a little bit different for me of, of the fighter that I am. So the owner of Metroflex right here. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Frank Trent here, one of the legends in MMA, doing yeah, a little Skype dude. interview. So, you know, I'm ready for the fight. I'm excited for it. And I got no I got no quarrels or no beefs with Guy Oti but he's just trying to take food off my son's table, and, and we can't have that. You Are you just focusing on fighting now? This is all you got to worry about now is just worrying about fighting. Absolutely. I'm just focusing on pushing Bubba J brand and going to the top. Fighting is all I know. Fighting is what I do and fighting is how I feed my family. So what's what's the family doing at home? Like what are they is there is your wife working as well or are you are you making enough now from Bellator that she can stay at home? I uh, I wasn't making enough when she wasn't working, but I I have a strong faith as you know, my spirituality in God and God and him leading our way and you know, I think fighting is one of my resources, but, you know, my Lord and Savior is my source. And I, I've been letting him guide me and letting him, you know, tell us what we need to do to continue my dream and continue. OK, I will continue my dream and continue fighting the way I want to fight with my family around me. I didn't I didn't ask for my wife not to work, but I didn't want her to work because she's also my dietitian. She's also my nutritionist. And we just had a new baby boy. So it's going to be hard for me to focus on that. And, and also, you know, be there for my son the way I want to be there. So, you know, we, we all at home, when I go to train, sometimes they come with me. My wife trains. She works out. Uh, and my son's always in my corner. He's like, I put a video up the other day of him on IG hitting mitts with me. So, you know, he, he's, he's there. He's training. He's going to be the future. So I'm, I'm investing in him now. Are they, are they coming with you to uh, Windstar, to Tackerville, Oklahoma? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Every time. And so who's going to be in your corner? It's going to be Antonio McKee. Um, just me and Antonio are going to go out there and do what we do. Antonio McKee's, you know, he's legendary in the sport. He knows what he's doing. He's seen it all. He's done it all. He knows exactly what um, to expect. So we're just going to go about it that way. I like it, Bubba. I like the new attitude. Well, the same attitude reinvented. I like I like it. I like how you are. And, and, and I know I've been sneaking around trying to find out how your training's been going. And I've heard nothing but good things. Um, haven't skipped the practice, haven't missed the practice, but they're ready to go every single time. And, and you are bringing the heat. You know, so this fight's going to be great. It's going to be a good fight to watch. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, the new attitude is, is something that I'm, 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 I'm willing to put in the time. I'm willing to invest in who I am because people, once they get a whiff of what I, what I know, once they see me scratch the surface, then they'll know I'm coming. And, and that's something that I want. I want you to know that Bubba Jay's coming. I'm up next. I love it. All right, Bubba. Take care. Have a great rest of your training camp. Have fun with your workout right now. We'll talk to you soon. My man, I'll talk to you later, buddy. Thanks for the interview.